It can be a frustrating situation if your child refuses to poop. So maybe you went through the potty training journey and teaching them to pee on the potty was not as difficult as teaching them to poop. It might be difficult for you to keep your cool or be patient and understanding when your child is doing so well with pee, yet they absolutely refuse to poop on the toilet. Why is this happening and what are you supposed to do? Let's dive into it. It is important to note that sometimes there is nothing that you can do in this situation except give your child time. If you've been at this for months and months and nothing has changed, then it's definitely time to revisit your strategy and what you're doing to help your child poop on the toilet and make sure that there are no medical concerns that may be preventing your child from being able to poop. So there's definitely a realm of medical situations that can be going on. If your pediatrician has already said, you know, like there's no medical concerns, this is strictly behavioral, then this video is for you. And we can definitely work on how to teach your kid to poop in the toilet. The very first thing that you need to do as a parent is to acknowledge your child's fear. This is the most important thing to do if your child has verbalized that they are scared. If they haven't told you that they're scared, don't even bring it up because you don't wanna put any idea in their head that pooping is scary. You wanna make sure that if your child says that they're scared, do not say, oh, there's nothing to be scared of. Like, you just need to push it out. Like, that is not the approach we're taking here. So what you do need to do, <laughs> do, do, <laughs> and we're talking about do, do. You do need to tell them, I understand that you're scared, and I know you can do this. You want to acknowledge it and encourage them. I understand that you're scared, and I know you can do this, or I know you can do hard things, or you're tough and strong, and I know that you can do this. Like just anything encouraging. The second thing that you need to do is make sure that you have a comfortable environment. So you need to make sure that your bathroom is child friendly. It is not just like a pee dungeon or a poop dungeon, and you're not forcing your child to stay in the bathroom for any hugely specific amount of time. You need to make sure that they are using a toilet that they are comfortable on. So maybe you need to revisit that. Go back to the potty aisle at Target. Let your child pick out what kind of potty seat they want to use. You can also place comfort items in the bathroom such as books, a couple bathroom toys that you like designate specifically for the bathroom, or anything that you think that your child will be interested in and make them want to actually spend some time in that space. I know that when a child is accustomed to pooping on the toilet, it really should only be like a five minute thing. But as your child is learning and trying to get more comfortable, it may be a little bit longer of a process of being in the bathroom, depending on how long your child will sit. Now, I don't generally recommend having your child sit for a long time if they are putting effort into pushing their poop out because we actually don't want them pushing. We don't want them like getting little baby hemorrhoids down there. So we're not encouraging them to push. We're just encouraging them to be comfortable sitting on the toilet. As well as being comfortable on the toilet, the best pooping position is actually squatting. So if your child is using a floor potty, then they're already set up in the correct posture with their knees higher, higher, highly elevated higher. <laughs> Does that make sense? If your child is using the actual home, like normal person toilet and you have an insert on top of it, you want to use something like a squatty potty because it wraps around the toilet so that your child can spread their legs into more of a squat position. The other beneficial thing about being in a squat position and having their legs spread wide, and I know this is going to sound really weird to some people, but your child will have a better viewpoint. This is so awkward. Uh, your child will have a better vantage point to be able to watch themselves poop because generally kids are afraid of what they don't understand. And when they can actually watch the poop come out, like maybe just a couple times, then that fear is gone and they know what is coming out of their body and they know how it's coming out. And when they see this happening, then it's it, it seems kind of weird, but like it's not a bad thing. Now the third thing that you need to do is make sure that you have routines in place. This is something that you should be doing with a lot of things in your life, but especially with going to the bathroom. You need to make sure that your child is going to the bathroom before and after meals and during any big transitions. So maybe they're getting ready for a nap. They need to sit on the toilet and try and go to the bathroom before that nap. They need to sit and go to the bathroom after their nap 
or before you get in the car or whenever you get somewhere new. All these different transition times are a great time to say, we're gonna get out of the car and go find a bathroom. It should just be part of the routine that they're just like, they know that they have to go to the bathroom. I don't care if they don't pee, I don't care if they don't poop, but they need to be in the routine and they need to have more practice sitting on the toilet because if you think about how many times a day people are going pee and how many times a day do we poop, your child doesn't have that many opportunities during the day to practice pooping. So perhaps having a lot of opportunities in your day to sit and practice is going to help them become more comfortable. Now this does not mean, like does not mean we're setting a timer because we're not. We are not following a timer, we're following a routine. So there's a major difference there. Tip number four is to talk it out. So having age appropriate conversations about using the bathroom and reading books about going poop. There's a great book called Everybody Poops and everybody poops. So start talking about it and do some things around the house, like play with some Play-Doh and pretend that it's like, like squeeze the Play-Doh through your hand so it looks like it's coming out of a butthole. And you can tell them this, like your Play-Doh is your poop and my fist is your butthole and when I squeeze it through, it's gonna come out. So you can show them like that's exactly what happens when you're pooping and have those conversations. The more that you normalize it, the more your child is going to be like, okay, this is like something everybody does. It's not just like a me thing. Tip number five is to have a reward system. Now, I am big on using a reward system and not bribing them. Once you have a reward system in place, you can use it in a million different ways. For example, if you have a sticker chart and your child needs to earn five stickers before they get a physical prize, you can do that with anything. Maybe they sit on the potty five times before nap. Then they get their sticker each time and they get a little prize before nap. But then what happens if like in a week from now your kid is doing a really great job with sitting and they don't need a reward every time they sit you change the directions so you're using the same system you're just using a different way of communicating it so instead of giving them a sticker every time they sit you can give them a sticker every time they try to poop so you're gonna know when your kids trying to poop and you can give them a sticker every time they do that then again we're getting more practice they're getting more encouraged if you take my course potty party the course and then you will know all about potty bins and and your child's prize bin. I will leave a link to the course in the description box down below because I just don't have enough time in this video to go through all of those details, but definitely use a reward system. Once your child gets used to just sitting and trying to poop, then you can move the reward to every time they actually poop in the potty, they can get a sticker and then they get the four or five stickers and then they get their prize. So it's the same system, different motivation. Tip number six is to not put pressure on your child. The more that you are pressured, and this goes for like anything in life at all, like if somebody is going to pressure me to do something, I'm not gonna do it because somebody told me to do it. Kind of works the other way around too. Like if somebody tells me not to do something, I'm gonna go and do it because they told me not to. So um, tread lightly, <laughs> depending on your child's personality here. In all reality, any amount of increased pressure in trying to get your child to poop on the potty, it's going to increase their anxiety and resistance to going to the bathroom. And you may end up in a complete reluctance to even go pee pee on the toilet and you may be completely regressed back to square one. So be very, very cautious when you're pressuring your child, like you want to push them a little bit and challenge them within reason and developmental appropriateness. So we're not pressuring, we're just challenging. So does like, do you see like where the difference is? Because if you're like, just push your poop out, like come on, you just, you, you gotta get the poop out. It's about to be, bed, it's about to be bedtime and you haven't pushed the poop out, so you need to just do this, come on, like push it out. That is, that that's recipe for disaster, so don't do that. But you can challenge them by saying, I understand that you're scared and I know that you can do this and when you do, you're getting a sticker on your chart. Do you see how everything works together? Tip number seven is to use distraction as necessary. So whether this means that your child can watch a quick TV show while they're sitting on the potty, or they are playing with an item from their potty bin, which yet again, grab the course, you will know what I'm talking about, then you should distract them within reason because you want them to be relaxed enough to just let the poop slide out. Uh, hopefully your kid isn't constipated. If your kid is dealing with constipation, then you need a whole different video, possibly even a one-on-one -on -one consultation, but that's 
a conversation for another day. Distract your kid <laughs> when you can distract them. Tip number eight is to model proper potty behavior. So yeah, this means that your kid should be watching you go to the bathroom and if you feel weird about it, then that's weird because your kid came out of you and like that, that was fine. So let your kid watch you in the bathroom and I'm like, who cares if they like bend down and watch your poop come out because what privacy. Let your kid watch you go to the bathroom, let your kid look at your poop in the toilet, and let your kid flush your poop down the toilet. Have a celebration and say, bye bye poopies, smell you later. And that's it, like just let your kid do that and it's all part of normalizing the process. We really talk about poop a lot around here, so I hope that you're enjoying this video. My last tip for you is that when necessary, you need to hire professional help. And that's exactly what I do here at Slumber and Bloom. I make a complete customized potty plan for your child based on where you are at in this journey and what your child needs in order to succeed. I like to use a lot of play therapy strategies as my background is in child life psychology and using play to learn and get through anxieties is huge when it comes to child development. So if you need to hire me for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, check out the packages in the description box down below. I will also pin them in the comment section of this video. If you're not ready for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, but you wanna check out Potty Party the course, I will also have that listed in the description box down below. Make sure you grab it and go through the course. And let me know if you have any questions. Leave them in the comments down below and keep blooming. Mwah.